Hey, I'm Fred Minnick, and by now you've probably heard about the Netflix series on the Pappy Van Winkle heist, what we used to call Pappygate. I'm going to tell you what it was like to cover it back in 2013 to 2016. It was really friggin' weird. If you can imagine Pappy Van Winkle, 23-year-old, and moonshine mason jars, giddy up. <laughs> So to understand why Pappy Heist became such a big deal and such a big national headline, you really do need to understand the year it happened. 2013 was the year that Bourbon came back. It was the year that had all the headlines that Bourbon was officially back. America's spirit is back in the fold. Everybody's drinking Bourbon again. Plus, Maker's Mark earlier in the year had the crazy proof lowering debacle where they went from uh, 90 proof to 84 proof, then went back to 90 proof. And they, you know, basically there were bourbon headlines all the time in major news outlets, and they were getting a lot of attention on, you know, CBS This Morning and things like that. I was even on CBS This Morning promoting one of my uh, promoting my book whiskey women so 2013 had a lot of national attention on bourbon so when it was announced that pappy van winkle uh, 200 bottles of pappy van winkle was stolen in october 2013 the national media was just eating it up everybody knew about pappy it was already hard to get way uh it's way harder to get today but back then it was still pretty hard to get and but the media was eating it up and it became a bit of a frenzy and i remember going to the press conference it was absolutely strange now to paint a picture for you we are in a room filled with bourbon pappy van winkle so pappy van winkle in bottles pappy van winkle with labels on it without labels in moonshine jars they actually had van winkle in moonshine jars i i don't know how that that sold they also had barrels of uh, wild turkey uh eagle rare it was just like i mean in all honesty if you were walking into that place and you weren't thinking about like whoa this is the most pappy i've ever seen in my life it's the most i've ever been around it, I mean, it, everybody's mind was blown. It was crazy. And it was almost like the sheriff's department was like doing that as a wow factor. And while everybody was like focusing on the bottles and like, oh my God, look at all this pappy. You know, when they started talking about the nine people who got indicted and bringing up the steroids and bringing up uh, a, a loose connection to like child pornography and all of these other things, you started realizing that this group that got together at like uh, at softball games, figuring out a way to steal all of these bottles from 2008 to 2015, you started to realize that these weren't bourbon fans. And while they may work at these distilleries, these are just flat out criminals. And it completely changed my perspective on the culture of bourbon, where this was probably the first time that I really saw an ugly side of, of, of bourbon, you know, that would persist for a very long time and still does today. And that is just people trying to capitalize on the popularity and they don't necessarily enjoy it. They're just trying to make a buck off of it. They're trying to flip a bottle. Well, in this case, they were stealing bottles and, you know, trying to uh, flip them. And I remember looking at like the evidence tags on the bottles. You know, I took these close up shots of the evidence tags and it really felt like, you know, a crime scene. And and these bottles were evidence. And so there was a big there was a big discussion about what would happen to the bottles. Uh, and I remember the reporters were huddled around Sheriff Mellon at the time, and he was saying, like, you know, maybe hopefully we can auction them off at charity and maybe we can do, you know, something, you know, something cool with the uh with the bottles uh the van winkles were very much against uh anything happening to the bottles you know having them auctioned off at charity because i mean who knows what would have happened to them and people were like oh well come on let it, let it go to a good cause but if you think about it you're talking about people who had been dealing steroids and you want to trust that the van winkle product while in their possession uh, had not been messed with. 
I mean, probably it wasn't, but did you want to take the chance? I know if I'm bidding on something at auction, uh, I probably would bid on it, to be honest with you. But instead, they actually destroyed uh, all the bourbon. There was a rumor that one of the reporters in the press conference actually stole a bottle. I never could uh, verify that. And no, that rumor was not about me. I can guarantee you that. But there was a rumor that one of the reporters in the room stole a bottle uh, and got caught on the way out and just gave it back. But, you know, it is it it was a it was a very strange thing. Um, it was a very strange thing to cover. But, you know, you see these cases upon cases in in the press conference and, you know, at other times uh, when I would interview the sheriff or something. Um, and you just you just it kept going back to me. You know, that these people were criminals, you know, that these people had done something uh, that they were about to go to jail for. And Kurt Singer did get a 30 year, 30 year sentence. He got reduced. And of course, now he's on the Netflix uh, documentary. But it just it, I kept going back and back to this. And it was it was a very it was very surreal for me to put criminals in connection to something that was a that was a passion of mine. And that's bourbon, of course. And it just, I don't know, it, it, it kind of hit, you know, it, it hit like right here. But of course, I can just go on to the next thing. It doesn't really affect my, my life other than covering it. And I remember the public sentiment toward the Van Winkles and how I thought that was so wrong. Now, the, the Van Winkles, of course, hold the, probably the greatest brand in bourbon. And nobody can get Pappy Van Winkle. Everybody gets angry about that. But I remember people blaming the Van Winkles and blaming Buffalo Trace uh, that it was their fault that someone had stolen all this stuff. And I'm like, if is anyone saying that about uh, a Maserati dealership when their cars are stolen? If their cars are stolen, is anyone saying that about you know someone who has their wallet stolen? Um, you know, I mean, maybe. Maybe that that happens from time to time where people do blame the victims, but I don't think it's right. I don't think that um, the Van Winkles ever really got fully understood about what about what that how badly that hurt them and how badly that damaged them. Now today, you know, we talk about the the Van Winkle heist, the Pappy Van Winkle heist, and people kind of laugh at it and they say, "Oh, that's why I can't get a bottle." But if you're running a business and someone stole that much from you, it's going to hurt. And just overall, this whole thing, it was a punch in the gut, definitely to the Van Winkle family and to Buffalo Trace. And while Buffalo Trace certainly has made some changes to how they you know, manage their product and their inventory, and it, it, it remains to be a very sad day for bourbon. You know, the, the Pappy heist was not good for the industry it definitely was not good for the van winkle family or buffalo trace and i didn't particularly enjoy covering it and well uh well at first you know all of us were kind of in a room like giggling like looking at all all the the van winkle case after case barrel after barrel and again i can't i keep going into this but in like the moonshine jars when things started getting serious and the sheriff talked about the criminal activity that, that these people were up to, uh, that's when we realized that, you know, this is a crime and it's not funny. It's not something to be laughed at. And it's certainly not something that we should be pointing at, you know, making a snide remark of like, oh, that's why I can't get pappy. But, um, you know, the fact of the matter is it was a really sad day, very sad day for bourbon. I did not enjoy covering it. It was one of the um, it, it was it was one of the poignant moments in my career that I got to see the the dark side of something that was you know up until that point uh, all fun for me. And after that, you know, we would see a few other uh, blemishes in the in the culture. You know, we would see uh, counterfeits. We would see you know people. Um, soliciting sexual activity for for bottles whether in joke or or for real on craigslist so we would see all kinds of stupid shit uh regarding bourbon and while bourbon is is continuing to grow at least you know people are drinking it there's like a greater movement now today 
to have people consume it and have a good time with it versus uh, you know flipping it. And this here, the Pappy Van Winkle Heist, is a direct result of of basically people trying to make money off of something that is not theirs. And so anytime you steal from someone else, you're going to get caught. And so I guess that's the life lesson here with this. Don't steal. I don't know. It's in the Ten Commandments for a reason. But uh, at any rate, again, a dark, sad day for bourbon was the was the Pappy Heist. And I wish it never happened, but uh, I'll still be watching that Netflix documentary like everybody else. But that's going to do it for this quick uh, reminder of what once was and how it happened. If you'd like to see more about bourbon and the reviews and the history, click the subscribe button and become a member to uh, get inside some of the wacky cool things that we're doing in the membership community. But that's going to do it. Be safe out there, folks. Remember, no licking handrails, no licking trash cans. And vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, <laughs> everybody.